Should you build your own custom bike from the frame up? Well, let's talk about it. Man, that might have been my shortest intro ever, right? Anyway, today we're going to talk about what I usually do when it comes to buying a new bike. I like to buy either a used frame or a new frame and build it from the bottom all the way up. If you really plan this out, it can definitely be the most rewarding uh, project in mountain biking for the rider. But the first thing is first, is this right for you? Number one, I kind of think that this video is more tailored to more experienced riders, riders with maybe a year and a half worth of experience. Beginner riders can learn a lot here because we're going to talk about some basic pitfalls and incompatibility, but this should be attempted by somebody with experience and knowledge to do it. I think a couple years ago, this would have been somewhat controversial, but with so many direct to consumer bike companies out there, I feel like it's kind of lost in that. If you have the money and the means to support your local bike shop, I highly recommend doing that. All right, so why should you build a bike from the frame up? Well, number one, you can find clearance frames, you can buy used frames, you can find the best deals with online retailers. You could even do price match with online retailers, and I do that a lot. I mean, a couple good examples is REI will throw up their 20% off a full price item to a member. Competitive Cyclist does nearly the same thing. Worldwide Cycling will do a 15% off your whole order, I think. Another good reason is you have options of getting what I like to call end of year model clearance blowouts or whatever. Both my Evil Insurgent, my Yeti SB6 were both clearance frames, so I got great deals at 40 and 50% off of those. A lot of companies will put exclusive deals up on their website. I know MRP uh, last month was running a deal on a blemished ribbon at 20% off. If you're, if you're doing enough mountain biking, don't worry, you'll add enough cosmetic damage to it uh, anyway. So it's kind of like a 20% off is a really good value there. Also, Fox likes to put up their suspension about the end of April. Online real retailers will have quick sales on those and you'll see 20, 30% off of those products as well. Bike frames go on clearance all the time, especially about mid to late fall. Uh, December, you can see some really deep cuts in pricing on brand new frames there with full warranty. And the last reason for building a bike from the frame up is being able to use used components that you already have onto that build. In my experience, a lot of times I might strip a whole bike down just to the frame, sell the frame, and dump the other parts on the new bike frame. Before we get too far into the topic, uh, I do have links to Worldwide Cyclery, uh, competitive cyclist and Jensen down below they're all affiliate links and anytime you make a purchase on those it's like tipping me just a little bit it helps the channel out a lot and it doesn't cost you any more all right so I have convinced you in the buying a frame now what well you're gonna have to pick your frame you need to know a couple things what do you want your wheel size to be and also your size of the frame I can't help you with any of that right now uh, but if you're looking into the future, you might say that a 29-inch wheel bike right now is probably going to be the most relevant bike going into the next three years. A couple other things that you need to consider are your local trails and your ride goals. I think those are kind of like just kind of things that you can evaluate when it comes to picking a frame. But also, especially if you're buying a new frame, I kind of like to call it like the geographic bike shop dealer. So a good example of this is when I wanted to buy my Yeti frame, one of the big contributing factors into me buying that frame is because I had Ruby Canyon Cycles in Grand Junction as a Yeti dealer. So they know how to work on those bikes. Also when I bought my Evil over the Edge and Fruta, they work on Evils all the time. They have them in their demo fleet. So those are guys that I trust uh, to work on those bikes. Kind of the last thing is take all your personal preferences and push them towards buying this new frame. A couple things that I look for when I'm buying a new frame is suspension uh, bearing linkage. That's number one. If there's a ton of bearings, that means that's a ton of labor for you or a bike mechanic to work on. Uh, that cost adds up, so I like to keep it around six uh, suspension bearing linkage or eight maybe for like the case of my Evil. I also try to avoid proprietary exclusive uh, suspension designs. So a good example of this is the Candale Trigger. You can't find any bike mechanics that can work on the Fox Diet. It's kind of a sweet shock, it's a pull shock, but it's pretty hard to find anybody to work on it. So you have to send that to Fox and wait on the turnaround time there. I like to find bikes with parts that can be serviced by a bike shop. Now let's say that you do have that frame picked out. You're gonna need to do some research now. You need to either pull out the manual for that bike call a dealer, talk to a bike manufacturer, and find out the sizing for these features. Bottom bracket, headset, brake compatibility, like what the brake post, 
seat post diameter, rear axle, tire compatibility. We'll go with max tire size compatibility. And especially if you're buying a frame with no rear shock, you need to know the rear shock eye to eye and stroke length. Once you have kind of all those measurements, you can kind of go forward and figure out exactly what you need. Now we're gonna start digging into components a bit. My biggest recommendation is pick components that you think are gonna last two to three years down the line. Don't really skimp here because you might end up paying the price later on. This is one of the biggest pitfalls that I had is just skimping on something. Coming back to revisit it later, it ends up costing me a lot more money than it ends up being worth. So do it right. As far as like your suspension goes, again, get a good quality rear shock that is easy for a bike mechanic to work on. Uh, anything that has a standard air can is kind of what I recommend. And when it comes to forks, of course, take a bike that runs off a standard a single crown, inch and a half taper to inch and one eighth steer tube. A couple other pitfalls with bikes is I want to stress and recommend that you follow the factory recommendation unless you really know what you're doing. I always deviate all the time, but that's because I know what I want. And with forks, kind of a new pitfall for those is the offset on the axle. Uh, that's kind of changing, so be sure to look and pay attention if you're to buy a fork, what the offset on that fork is. Briefly, we're gonna talk about headsets. Not a lot of bike frames come with them, uh, my Evil Insurgent did because it's kind of a weird size FSA a headset, but my Yeti did not. So you need to do your research and get that number there. A couple other things that you need to include with that are going to be top caps and headset spacers. I also kind of like to recommend going with something with stainless steel bearings. They're more expensive, but they're so much better. Now this is going to be one of the most important purchases of the entire bike, and that's going to be the bottom bracket. There are so many pitfalls when it comes to bottom brackets. First off, you have to have one that matches. I'm not gonna go into crazy detail and I can't answer all your questions about bottom brackets, but if you're planning on going with like a SRAM dub crank system, you need to go with the dub bottom bracket. Bottom brackets are not universal. So another good example is I have a GXP crank, which means I need a GXP bottom bracket. My Yeti SB6 runs a Pressfit 92 GXP bottom bracket. All other bikes can run different things. I also prefer threaded over press fit, but a lot of great bikes do come with press fit systems and that's just the way it is. But picking the right bottom bracket is gonna lead to you getting the right crank, which is what we're gonna talk about next. A lot of times you might just be buying crank arms, so you might have to buy a chain ring. Be sure to get the right chain ring that is compatible with the crank. A couple good examples as Ray's Face runs something called Cinch, SRAM runs something called Direct Mount, and then Shimano has a whole laundry list of different bolt-on options, and it is really easy to get the wrong one there, so pay attention. Staying on the drivetrain, another critical area to focus on is the free hub body on your rear wheel. That's going to determine what kind of drivetrain that you're gonna be running going forward. If you get the XD driver, you're gonna be running SRAM Eagle GX and higher. If you have a standard Shimano, you could run SRAM NX and a lot of the older model Shimano drivetrain systems. But also not to mention that the hub is such an integral part of the bike, a critical piece to its operation that it's really nice to have a high engagement hub. Look at one that is uh, pretty tough, pretty bomb proof out there and stick with that. So that way you're not tempted to get a better one in the future. Kind of staying with hubs, I mean, of course on the hub you're gonna have your wheel. You could buy them separately, you could buy them individually, you could buy them together as a wheel set, you might have some laying around. Obviously get them in a spacing that you need. But the biggest thing here, the biggest incompatibility is having the wrong inner width of the rim versus wrong tire width. So again, perfect example of this when I was running a 25 millimeter inner width rims with my Evil Insurgent. I also had 2.5 Maxxis tires on there. It was a total disaster. I swapped the rims out, put 30 millimeter inner width and matched those with the 2.5 tires. It's been incredible. So be sure to do a little bit of research there to see what tire sizes are compatible with the wheels. Of course, it's basically a commodity in mountain biking now, but you're gonna need a dropper post. Figure out whether the dropper post you need has to be internal or external routed. There's also a lot of issues in compatibility when it comes to brakes. Uh, there's a bunch of matchmakers out there and different systems that kind of declutter your cockpit and handlebar. I mean, the biggest thing that I like to say is like if you have Shimano XT brakes, if they're iSpec2 compatible, you can get a problem solver and hook up a SRAM GX shifter to that. Just little things here and there that kind of go together. 
that problem solver adapter kind of really does solve a lot of problems while also decluttering your cockpit. Also, when it comes to buying wheels, predetermine what kind of brake rotors that you want to run that either be six bolt or center lock. That's going to determine a lot going forward in terms of the tools you need and the, the adapters you might want after that. Another area and pitfall that you can make is having the wrong stem, wrong handlebar. Be sure you make sure to get them at the right size. I mean, kind of sticking with drivetrain, everything's kind of cut and dry there. On the cassette, you might be able to run a X01 cassette with a GX rear derailleur. The cheaper option uh, for rear derailleurs, which can be kind of easy to rip off your bike. And of course, there's some other general buys out there. You're gonna need tires. Just make sure that you get the right tires with the wheels. You get sealant if you're planning to go tubeless. Saddles are pretty universal, but I'm a pretty big fan of Ergon saddles and the, the measured sit bone width. Uh, grips are essential, but again, saddles, grips and pedals, uh, and cable housing, and tires might be something that you already have that you could just kind of save some cash on and throw on the bike. Those are just a couple key points. I'll have a checklist down on the bottom of other things you need. Uh, that like top caps and, and headset spacers just so that way if you were to build a bike you can kind of run through that list and figure out some parts that you need. Again if you get everything and you get everything on time and you're patient with this whole build and you do it right it'll be extremely rewarding for you as a rider. Now once you get all your parts in hand you're not done yet you need to take them over to your local bike shop to have them put them together if you don't have the means to do so. Headset, bottom bracket, especially if they're press fit, are gonna be the most likely candidates. It's a pretty good bike shop over there if you need somebody to put something together for you. I think they charge a flat rate. A lot of bike shops do, uh, some don't. But just be sure to go say hi to the boys down at your local bike shop. So is there anything that I missed? Are you interested in building a frame from the bottom up? Is it something that you're not into? Leave it down in the comments below. And be sure to keep coming back to this video, check the comments, see what people have to say about the topic. I've always enjoyed the, the conversation that we have out there. Also, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button. That does a lot for me. Also, don't forget to smash that notification bell. If you've already done it, don't do it again. <laughs> for all those that share my videos, I greatly appreciate it. And there's a special place in my heart that activity. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great day and we'll talk to you all later. Peace.